Okay, so let's take a quick look at the new proposals functionality here in the Stoplight platform. The intent of proposals is to give you a screen that surfaces all of the API design and documentation in-flight changes that are already occurring across your company, your workspace, your organization, across your teams. And it does that by watching all of your Git connected projects, watching the branches that are created, the pull requests that are created, and identifying if there are any uh, design or documentation related changes in those branches and pull requests, and surfacing those branches and pull requests here on this proposal screen for you to then dig in uh, to the actual set of changes, which we'll look at in a second. So you can see here, there's already a couple of, uh, a couple of branches and pull requests that have been surfaced here related to documentation, but in this workspace, but first let's just go create uh, a new change so we can see it kind of working from scratch. And then we'll look at what the actual proposal screen looks like. So we'll do it over here in this Studio Playground project. Uh, you can see it just has two, a two APIs, a couple schemas. We'll go ahead and we're gonna add a property to the address schema country, just to see how that ends, ends up getting picked up and represented uh, by the proposals functionality. So we're gonna go here into Studio. We'll create a new branch for our changes, creating up the master branch. Uh, update the address schema. Okay, so we have our address schema. I'm gonna add country to the property because we wanna start collecting country and representing country in our addresses for this fictitious uh, you know, set of APIs. And let's go ahead and commit those changes. I'm here in Studio uh, Browser, but this also works for Studio Desktop and the CLI as well. So I'll push up this change. And let's see how this change is represented when we create a pull request in our, in our version control system, which is how many folks uh, today kind of review and, and try to digest and understand what the changes are to their design and docs. So I'll go over to GitHub. I will refresh here. Here's our branch that we just created. I'm gonna create a pull request. Um, I'll just give it a title, add country to address, and I'll create it here in GitHub. Okay, so here's the formal review process that we can go through with the team. Uh, this obviously works for GitLab, Bitbucket, et cetera. They all have similar functionality with pull requests and merge requests. And I could see the one file that I've changed, right? I changed this model's address file to add a country property. From just this though, it's difficult to understand what the impact on my API is uh, from this change to the schema. If we go over to Stoplight though, let's go over to the proposals list again. And I'll refresh. Here we see it's picked up that change to the Studio Playground Redux project, add country to address. It's in review because there's an open pull request. If we had just made changes without, you know, uh, updating the, you know, creating a pull request, it would still be in the list, but it'd be marked as a work in progress. We can see that in fact, actually, we haven't just updated the address uh, schema to add the country property. This actually, that, that change resulted in several other changes to our API including the uh, up, create a new user operation and the user's API and seven other changes, some of which were actually, you know, are, are likely breaking changes. So if we go look at the actual proposal screen, this screen is meant to give you and your team uh, a place to better understand the impact of the changes to your design and documentation and, and facilitate, you know, discussion or review of those changes prior to the approval in your VCS and the merge of those changes in your project. So if we look on the left, we can see a list of everything that was affected. So there's a couple operations in the user's API and a couple operations in the payments API. If we look at the actual address schema down here that was also modified, we can see that indeed we added the country property and this affected two consumers of this address schema, user and invoice. So let's go look at user, which we can see on the left as well. Here, we can see that user did use the address schema clearly, which now has the country property. This is not considered breaking on its own, so there's no breaking flag here, but the change here to user affected these two API operations, including create a new user. So if we click on this, here it is up here. If we hover over this, we could see that it's, there's a breaking change to the request body of this create new user. And that's because we added this required country property to the request which is considered a breaking change because any consumers of this create new user API operation that were already using the API now are expected to 
provide this required country property when they're making a request, which is a breaking change. It's also here in the response, as we can see on the right, uh, but in the context of a response, this new required property is not necessarily a breaking change, but just an, a new bit of information that's returned when calling this API. We can see a link to the pull request up top, who authored it, uh, the fact that it's in review, and a list of all the changes on the left, including a text diff in the current previous state of you know, the given thing we're looking at. So again, the intent here is to provide you a nice overview of the changes in a way that is easier to digest and surfaces, you know, gives more visibility to the things that are changing or the proposed changes across the API designs and documentation at your company.